I've got a desire for dog and suds for lunch. Now, this isn't the subject of the day. If you want to get straight to the subject of the day, which, you know, then just skip to this point right here in the video. But I'm not going to talk about dog and suds for just a minute. But there's only a few left. And we have one right here in Prairie Gold, Arkansas. I asked the owner one day how many there were because he comes to where I work at quite often, you know, as a customer. And he told me, and I don't remember what he said, but I think he said single digits. You know, but I don't remember for sure. But yeah, this building looks pretty rough. But man, their burgers are so good. Some of the, not all their speakers even work. You know, some of their speakers don't even work. And sometimes they're so busy, you can't find a place to park in order at the speaker outside. But Dog and Sud started, I think, in the 40s or 50s. And there used to be quite a few. But not anymore. But, I mean, look at this building. I've said for a while that if I owned this place and if I made good money and if I owned this property instead of leasing it, I would do a major renovation or I would tear it down and build new. I know it's a lot of ifs, but man, their food is good. Look at this old timey ordering system. Unlike Sonic, there's no place to slide your credit card. If you pay with a credit card, they take it inside, which I don't like. So I make sure I have cash when I come here. Can I take your order? Yes, I would like two of your double cheeseburgers, please, with uh, ketchup, mustard, pickle, and onion. Two double cheeseburgers, mustard, ketchup, pickle, and onion. Will that be all? Yes, ma'am. 434, you paying cash or debit? Cash. Be right out. Thank you. There it is. Look how good that looks. Mm -mm. My wife, she calls these fair burgers. F A I R. Because I forget, she says they either smell like burgers you used to get at the fair or taste like them. I can't remember what she said. But I did cheat myself because they just got a new menu board. Used to it told you if you got more than three items on the burger, they charge you extra. This board didn't say it, so I thought they did away with that policy. That's why it cost over $4 for both of these. Terrible, just terrible. Used to, what I would do is leave the mustard off and go home and put mustard on myself. It is kind of goofy they charge you extra if you put four items on your burger. That's just weird. But great tasting burger. Time to get to our subject. Today I'm going to attempt to compare the price of ownership of an electric vehicle to an ICE vehicle. Now, there are a lot of these on the internet, but everyone I've seen compare new vehicles. You know, which is fine, but most people I know buy used vehicles. I don't know about the rest of the country. I do know some people that definitely do buy new vehicle vehicles, but for the, for the most part, it's used. Now, anytime anybody posts numbers like I'm about to post, such as trying to get to the nuts and bolts of what it actually costs, you can pick those numbers to death. Anybody can. And there's no way to get an exact number. It, it's all, you know, this is to give you an idea, and you take it from there and adjust the numbers according to you, such as <clears throat> some people actually change their own oil, but most people don't. Some people do not, most people probably don't actually change their transmission fluid. But for the, this analysis, we're gonna pretend that you do what the owner man, owner's manual says to do. And I compared the Spark EV to the Spark gas vehicle because I own one, so I know a little bit more about it. So I went to Carvana, their website, the only place I'll buy a car. And the reason is, I just despise car dealers. I cannot stand a car dealer. Just can't stand dealing with them. So anyway, that's why I bought my last three vehicles from Carvana. Here's what I found. I found a 2014 Spark gas-powered vehicle with 19,000 miles for $10,500, the one LT version. Now I cannot find, you know, cars to match exactly, but I got pretty close. Again, that's a 14 Spark gas vehicle. I found a fifth, that was $10,500. I found a 15 model Spark EV, which is what I have, 
except this is the one LT I, I found on the internet. 18,000 miles, $10,800. So off the bat, you spend $300 more for the electric vehicle than you do the ICE, but you get a year newer and 1,000 less miles. Okay, now let's look at these numbers. And I know you probably can't read my chicken scratch, but you hold it in this hand. But here we go. <clears throat> oil change. I called the dealer, local dealer, and it's $45 in oil change. Transmission fluid. I cannot believe it cost $179 to change the transmission fluid. That, that, geez, that's a lot of money. And other, $50. For other maintenance that you might need, such as, I don't know, but you know, like for instance, oil change doesn't include a filter. You know, in case you need a filter. And I probably underestimated this because I figure you need a filter about every time. I don't know. But $50, I think, is low, but that's what I put. Eight oil changes to $360 because that's what you'll need because I'm doing this comparison over five years and 60,000 miles. Now, I don't drive 12,000 miles a year, not even close, but they say that's the average. So five years, 60,000 miles, you'll need eight oil changes, $360. Now all this comes up to $589, $53 for tax, so $642 for maintenance on your um, Spark ICE vehicle. Now, the cost to buy, we've already covered. The uh, gas-powered car, 10.5, the EV, 10.8. Then you've got fuel. For the Spark, it says 30 to 39 miles per the gallon. 30 in the, on the highway, 39 in town. If you drive 60,000 miles with 34.5 miles per gallon average, which is in between those two, it comes up to 1,739 gallons. Now, in Northeast Arkansas, gas is about 260 a gallon right now. Late July 2018, 260 a gallon. That comes up to $4,522. Then, if you look at the Spark EV, for me, it caught with my rates here in Paragold, Arkansas, the rates are six and a half cents per kilowatt hour. It cost me about 1.2 to 1.4 cents per mile to push this vehicle down the road. So I put it right in the middle, 1.3. Over 60,000 miles, it comes up to $780 in electricity. Now, the total cost. The ICE vehicle, 10.5. Electric vehicle, 10.8. Maintenance for the ICE, $642. EV, zero. Now, it won't actually be zero. You still, according to the owner's manual, have to change the brake fluid or things like that. But I didn't count anything on maintenance where both, it has to be done to both vehicles. I only counted maintenance if it had to be done to one vehicle but not the other. And there's nothing you have to do to an EV that you don't have to do to an ICE vehicle as far as the maintenance um, according to the owner's manual. But the ICE maintenance, $642 more than the EV is the way I should have phrased it. Fuel and electrons. ICE, $4,522 for fuel. Electric vehicle, $780 for electrons. Total cost, over five years, 60,000 miles, buying a three-year-old Spark uh, ICE vehicle versus EV. You get 15,006, it costs you $15,664 to own that vehicle, not counting insurance, for five years, 60,000 miles. The Spark EV, 11,580. So according to this analysis, the electric vehicle will save you $4,084 over five years or $68 a month. Now, like I said, I know there will be people thinking to themselves, maybe even commenting, that you just cannot do a comparison. As a matter, as a matter of fact, I told uh, somebody um, on Facebook I was going to do this, and they said, you just can't compare it. You just can't do it. There's not enough data. You know, we haven't seen these go 200,000 miles yet. And I explained I was just looking at the cost if neither one of them have any problems. If the Spark EV doesn't have any problems, and if the Spark um, gas vehicle don't have any problems, then by my estimate, that's how much you're going to save by buying an electric vehicle. Did I forget to add something? Is my thinking flawed? It's certainly possible because, you know, I don't think of everything. So if there's something you thought of that I didn't think of that would increase the price of the EV or decrease the price of the uh, gas powered one, put in the comment section and let me know because I want to be right. I don't want to get anything wrong here, but like I've said before, I'm not that smart and maybe I have. But if there are maintenance issues, I would bet you you have more of a chance of maintenance issues. I mean, 
mechanical issues, you have more of a chance having it with the Spark gas-powered one than the Spark EV because there's more to tear up. You know, an EV has a motor, a battery, and a, um, oh, I, that other, I forget what it is, um, inverter, an inverter. And there's a few other things, but that's, that's most of it. A gas-powered car has tons of stuff that can tear up. Now, both these cars only have, you know, less than 20,000 miles. So I wouldn't expect any problems out of any of them. Because 60,000 miles, you're looking at high 70s. You know, by the time this time frame is up, I'm talking about. And the battery is under warranty in the Spark for eight years. So you still have five years left on the battery. So, you know, you can't holler that it's going to cost you six, $7,000 to have the battery replaced. That's not going to happen. Um, so anyway, not in that time frame. So anyway, that's what I came up with. Hopefully it's right, but I think it's pretty accurate. And I don't think anybody can argue, nobody can argue, I don't think that it's cheaper to own an electric vehicle than a gas powered vehicle. Does that mean you should go out and get one? That's, that's up to you and that depends on your lifestyle. If you drive 80 miles one way to work and back, you can't get, a, you can't get this car, you won't make it. You know, um, there's a lot of situations where this car I own will not work for you. You know, but I really believe it'd work for 90% of the people out there. 90% of the people watching this video, this car would work for you to do 90% of your driving. Seriously, almost all your driving. But that doesn't mean that you should get one. Depends on whether you want one or not. Whether that savings means anything to you or not. You know, if you have, uh, you know, if you have a lot of money, it doesn't matter. Try, you know, so. But anyway, that's just my thoughts. And since there were no videos out there I could find comparing used EVs to used gas vehicles, I want to throw that out there. And tell me what you think. If you own one, what's been your experience? Do you think you're saving money? Y'all have a great day. Thanks for watching. And remember, chicks dig scars and electric cars. And one reason they dig electric cars is because they know how much money it saves and that gives them more money for shopping. Aha! I just made a sexist comment. Women and shopping, you can't mention those together anymore, not in today's world, but I did anyway. Speaking about saying something politically incorrect, such as women like these cars so they can save money and give them more money for shopping, which is politically incorrect and we're not supposed to say stuff like that anymore, I screw that. The only thing I hate more than car salesmen is political correctness. I cannot stand political correctness. And I probably shouldn't say that because I do not want politics to enter into this, uh, into my channel. So I'm not going to, you know, but I'll just leave it at that. I cannot stand for people to tell you what you can say and can't say. There are certain words I will never use. You hear me, Papa John? Certain words I will never use just because they make me uncomfortable and they are truly degrading but I will not bow to the PC world, will not do it.